All right, so I wanna get this out there, a very informal video with some detailed shots of my modern DJ case I created. Thank you guys so much for all the feedback. Some people were actually interested in purchasing one. This is why I'm making this video. In this video, I'm gonna break down some of the uh, features of this case, and then I'll show you guys how you could actually pre-order one if you are interested. So first and foremost, I did my homework. I never planned on selling these. Um, it came out amazing. The only reason I ever built this is because I couldn't find a case for the Rain 4 and I needed a case pretty quick. So I decided to build one and then I decided to make it like this. So um, it came out amazing with the help of my father who is a retired carpenter. And you guys could see the, uh, the woodwork is just amazing, super smooth and um, very lightweight as well. But uh, how you can pre-order one is you go on my website, moderndjcases.com and you could place a $150 deposit, which will hold your place. If I sell at least five of them, I'll get enough material, which will make sense for me to build these. And I'm gonna get material for like 15 cases or so. So if I don't sell 15 cases, it's fine. At least I won't lose money, but um, I will need at least to keep that price, I will have to have at least five pre-orders to get started working on this case. Now, a few of the options you will have is just to buy the top case. So if you just want the top um, and you want to use, let's say, a truss for the leg, uh, very um, highly recommended, you could do that and then you could just buy the top case, okay? And then you could choose this look, which is the wooden look with wood on the side and wood on the top, which is what I recommend. But if you also want to do wood on the side and acrylic, black acrylic on the top, you can. And the last choice would be all black on the sides and on the top, and then it would look like this. I don't recommend that with my case because you could already get black cases elsewhere. Um, I could still make it for you though because this is a much more lightweight option than the competition out there. So uh, with the wood, it's all stained, um, covered with polyurethane, super smooth. It's very strong, even though it's thin wood, it's reinforced from the back and uh, with the black edging, it looks really, really nicely. Also, we have laptop stands. You have a choice for two laptop stands on each side, which is what I recommend. But if you want just one down the middle, um, you could do that as well. Uh, these laptop stands also become the latches for the lid. So if you decide to get the lid to protect the upper side of the controller and also hold the controller down, you could Velcro the controller down. I didn't Velcro it. Um, this top piece actually holds it down in place. So it latches in the front and then screws down onto this. And the reason why I made it like that is because I don't want to make any markings on the case itself. So I don't want to put any latches or any, um, any markings really on the case itself. So it looks super, super clean like uh, the way it is. There's also no handles on the side. Uh, it is pretty lightweight. The controller itself is pretty heavy, all right? So the case is not super light with the controller in it and everything else, but the case itself is super light. It's much lighter than a regular road case. And I wish I waited before I put the controller in, but I was putting it all together uh, before I made my mind about maybe selling these. Um, option is to a router out a hole here, like in the cardboard box type of handle. Um, and then you would have a handle on each side if you want to do that. But I will show you guys how we will have handles on this um, uh, at the end of this video. So that's the, the case itself from different views. Now the top all comes off and it's actually split into three pieces. So you have the sides and then you have the back here. And then the way it's cut, um, it's very, very um, detailed because if you just take a top piece like this, right? So you have the top piece cut out the controller. And if you just use a saw and you cut it, in these spots, you'll have a pretty big gap. You know, the saw, the saw itself is about uh, one eighth of an inch. So if you cut it twice, you'll have um, a quarter inch gap between the two gaps. So um, it wouldn't look as flush because here the laptop stand will cover this and you will not see it because I use low profile laptop stands. I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, but if you go with acrylic, let's say for the top, it would have to be all one piece and then you could just take it all off but um, really, you don't ever have to take this off and I'll show you guys why. Um, because the laptop stands will stay like this. And then if you wanna run 
the wires through the laptop stand, you can, and it's gonna look like a wire-free laptop. Um, you're just gonna see that one wire or two wires if you use your MacBook. Um, but you could also make a second hole for just the wires if you would prefer that way. Um, and then there's really no reason why you should be able, you need to get in here unless something dis disconnects because you should already have everything pre-wired. So your MacBook chargers um, should be pre-wired. So this cable, which I'm not gonna use it this way because I have a couple issues. Uh, this cable runs my USB hub with power. So this is only one cable that I need for the laptop to make it work, but it did give me a couple issues. So I'm actually gonna run the, um, the power separately. So it's gonna, the hard drive and everything's gonna go through one cable. So it's gonna be two cables instead of one, not a big deal. Um, then you also have this warm white LED. So the warm white LED is not really showing that well in this video. Um, it's showing more as a white LED, like a daytime white, but it's actually warm white and it accents the, the wood really nicely. It's very soft white and there's no hot spots at all in the strip. And the strip runs across the width of the controller. So it's really, uh, really cool and built in. And there's also a control for making it super, super bright. So in a super dark environment, uh, you will light up, you know, quite a lot. But I keep it on the dimmest setting and it looks the most elegant. It's just an accent light. And then I have a few custom features in this as well, like my antennas for my mic. So they just come out um, on each side. That's not something that, you know, would be included. Um, but that's something that you can customize yourself when you get the case. And same thing with the uh, MIDI pad here for my lights. This is a stream deck. It's going to control my lights from my DJ laptop, but um, on Show Express. But the wood would just go all the way to the end of the controller here. All right. So the main difference between my case and other cases is that it's super lightweight and you have that wooden finish and it looks super, super nice. There's no seams anywhere. Um, it's all one continuous piece and it looks super, super clean. Um, the miter job is, you know, top notch as my dad is a retired carpenter. So um, he does help me with this and um, it came out beautiful. Now, other options uh, would be obviously the base. Uh, for the base, you could get uh, a dolly, uh, which attaches to it. And then this all becomes a um, rolling, you know, rolling case and then you just put that on top and it's that's how I use it um, you also have the lid so this is the lid for the uh, the top obviously if you order one it will be all black uh, I had spare aluminum so I just use a silver one uh, but that just goes on top and it latches with the um, laptop stands and again there's no markings on the case and this protects and holds down the controller in place uh, let me show you guys how I actually pre-wire my case uh, another big difference between my case and then once that you buy is that the front is all open. So there's no uh, bezel in front of it. I like to be close to my controller. So having something in front would bother me to be honest. And also with the rain, you do have controls in the front. And then the Ref7 has controls in the front. I will be making this case for the Ref7, the Rain4, the Rain1, uh, the FLX10, and the SRT1000. Uh, those are the plans for now at least. Because I know I could get my hands on those. Um, but how do I pre-wire my cases? And let me show you guys the laptop stand. So this is one of the laptop stands. I could make them bigger as well. And I probably will make them a little bit bigger um, just for safety. And if I do resell them, I like to keep mine uh, small, but obviously for uh, your sake, unless you do request a smaller one, it will be a little bit bigger, especially if you use like a 16 inch MacBook. slides on screws on and then you have the cable the mac goes on there you plug it in then you just hide the wire in the laptop stand and the laptop stand becomes basically uh, wire free which is uh, really nice it's a super low profile laptop stand you can still get to all your controls on the controller uh, but if you want a, a higher laptop, you could get that. But this is perfect height. Um, I don't have to, um, you know, reach up or down. It's really nice. And then you have an option for a second laptop stand. But how do I actually pre-wire everything? So everything's pre-wired. I have a, uh, I have a mic in here. So that's what I did. 
yours would be just a regular foam here so you could cut out a mic holder if you want um, you do have a rack space underneath as well so i have one of my microphones underneath there and um, some other space for you know a couple other things like pens and batteries and the laptop stands also go in here so they'll be transported in here uh, my ssd so i do keep my music on the external hard drive um, so I have it in the front now, so I don't have to actually open the back anymore. And um, it makes it easier for setup. Just put the laptop down, plug it in, and then plug in the hard drive, and it's good to go. But however, the power, right? So the power is quite interesting how I do it, and I've always done it this way on my cases. Um, so this is my sound. So this is my rack in the first place. So you could also get this rack as a hollow case so everything's gonna be um hollow right you're not gonna get the you know pre-wired uh case but um if you just get the shell for this you could kind of make this on your own it's really not that difficult it does take some time um, there's a lot of wires that go on here because i'm using the external mixer uh, the qsc touch mix but basically if you were to get this as a shell you could still make this this rack or you could just run the wires down and um and pre-wire this with um your dm um, with your xlrs and then um, just coil them down and use this case as a transport of your cables uh, there's so many different ways to you know cut down your setup time but basically what i do is these cables this is the power so i just hide them like this for transport All right so for transport they're like that i put the case on top of this this does not screw on it just sits on these feet um, it's super super steady and solid uh, especially because this is pretty heavy um, not that heavy though and then everything just plugs in and it's good to go and then this goes down to the mixer and then from the mixer down to the bottom and then this is how i run my power and my uh, sound so i have my outs and i have my ins if i have live instruments uh, cinematography uh, people could plug in there they get an out from the mixer and then I have my power distribution with two different circuits so I could go left and right on two different circuits and not worry about power um, I have my one mic in here and the reason why I keep one mic in here is because if I just use the top case I don't need the bottom case and I still get one mic so then I would just have to run this cable the mic cable um, to the back of the controller itself uh, which would take, you know, a minute or so. It would probably take longer to run this mic cable to the back than the whole case itself. Um, but yeah, um, this slides out. So this is all custom made. I made this last year. Before that, I used to use just a regular truss. And um, I would run the power cables and stuff and the XLRs through the, uh, the truss. And then I would have this hanging out out of the controller. And it would be easy, obviously. You could also make the holes in the in the bottom just drill a take a hole saw and drill a you know two inch hole in the bottom and then drop these down but this does not bother me at all just the cables are visible here for from the back but um i'm really not that anal about that so it still looks good um as far as the bottom case goes um again you have the caster option so these are four inch casters and this is basically the lid uh, to protect the front here. So it just attaches. So once you take this off, um, the wheels attach to this. This goes down on the flat. And then I do have a cover somewhere for this. Not sure where the cover is. Uh, I'm not sure where the cover is, but there's a cover, uh, which is also available for purchase. And then that becomes your dolly, right? And this is light for what it is. It's a full size rack, as in not full size, not 19 inch, but it's a full rack with a mixer and a microphone and power distribution, all that stuff. And I could pick this up easily on stairs. If I go, gotta go up a flight of stairs, I grab this by myself easily. Um, this is definitely heavier than that rack as far as the controller goes. It's all because of the controller. If you use like the SRT 1000, I mean, that controller is only 13 pounds. Uh, this is gonna be super, super light. Uh, for now, I'm making these all one size. So the size is 36 and a half inches wide 
uh, the inner uh, dimensions are 35. So um, the inner dimension is 35 inches. Um, so if you have, let's say an SRT, SRT is about four inches less than the uh, Rain 4. Uh, so you're gonna have more wood on the sides. Uh, for now, that's how I'm making. And then eventually I'm gonna make them two sides. So let's say you want a super small case. Let's say you want um, the DGJ SB, you know, or um, the SX or something very small and you want a super small case, you know, just like this big, but covered in wood. Um, that's something that I could do as well. Um, I don't know if I missed anything. Obviously this is a very informal video just to give you guys an idea as to what we're working with. And I don't know where I put the case, the bag. I'd love to show you guys the bag because the bag is um, going to be part of all of this because you will need a bag to protect the wood, right? So for now, I've been using this blanket, but um, I had the bag for that, but I ordered the bag for this. And the bag is actually padded. It has handles on it. So there's handles on the bag um, and it's fully zipped. So it's going to be covering it from 360 degrees. And again, the lid is there to protect the controller. Um, but you still need to protect the wood and the aluminum. So make it last for, for a very long time. And to do that, you need a case. Okay, so the cases, we'll see what the price will be on the cases. It depends how many pre-orders we get. But I'll charge um, the cost that, you know, that they give me. They're going to give me some kind of discount if I order 10 or more. Um, and there's gonna be also a couple of options. You could get no padding, you could get double padding, a single padding, and there's also gonna be a slip-on option. The slip-on basically will cover it um, fully, except like the front here, right? Um, so it's gonna just slip on, but there's not gonna be any handles on it. So, because the slip-on case or cover cannot have any handles. So, uh, so keep that in mind. But all of those examples will be shown once we get them. I'm still waiting for the cases. And um, we would have to make handles in the sides here if you wanted something like that custom. Uh, we could do that. Uh, all right, guys. So that's going to be the video. Almost 20 minutes long, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. And um, any questions, just shoot me an email. Info at custom. No. Info at moderndjcases.com. Put that website together in like two uh, two days. And I'm going to be updating it. Um, but let's get some pre-orders in and uh, keep you guys posted. And obviously a turnaround, not sure exactly how long it will take. But I'm assuming once I start production. So once you put a deposit down and then we get five deposits, I'll email all of you guys and let you guys know we are ready for production. And if you still want to go with it, I'll ask you for another payment. And then I'll order the material, uh, the plywood, because I'm going to get plywood and everything uh, in bulk and um the laptop stands everything all the pieces are the aluminum the acrylic everything's gonna be in bulk and um, that's how you get much better prices and uh and now start making them and after that it should take about a week to two weeks to make and um then we have to figure out shipping so shipping i have not you know discussed much with anyone yet so we'll see exactly how much that costs the boxes and and you know how it works but i'm located in new jersey so i'll deliver this within two hours i could drive out uh, we could meet halfway as well and uh, i have no problem with that but uh, anyone that wants it shipped further out we'll have to uh, obviously cover the shipping so um we'll see how that works but again you could just get the top or you could get the whole thing and um, it's up to you but just the top with trussing if you already have a three foot truss put a black scrim on it and it's going to look quite amazing. So yeah, that's how that works.